Hey all, um, happy painting. This is a video in conjunction with Imagine FX Magazine and ArtRage, and I'm happy to share with you this video, this tutorial, which focuses on painting light and the way I use blend modes to do so. The use of blend modes is a really easy and fun way to enhance your painting, and that's what we're gonna do today. But as we start here, just with my basic approach to painting, it's um, the standard approach, which is find the dark shapes and building those dark shapes in quickly and boldly and sort of simplistically, um, juxtaposing them with the opposite of that, the, the white canvas underneath, um, is a great way to not just find sort of the anatomy of the painting, but to figure out your design and to make sure it's all going to work. Um, it's also really great uh, if you're working traditionally, it's just a fast way to simplify uh, what, what's happening on the canvas. But after you establish those darks, then um, moving on to color blocking is what I like to do next, working my way up the value scale from dark to light. Uh, this way of working is something that I learned from my um, Disney illustrator uh, mentor from back in the Mary Poppins era. Uh, he, he was a, a big advocate of this method of painting and I, I really love it because it allows you to work in your own style. It allows you to paint you know, whatever way you wanna paint but it helps you focus on what's important along the way uh, so that you don't get distracted by unnecessary details. You focus on design, you focus on value, you focus on constructing the quality of the light in the scene, and that is your focus from the start. Um, what you can see here is I'm just using the oil brush for everything, and I'm just using a big fat brush and just smushing all the paint all around. As you can see, also, um, Art Rage has one of the best um, natural media simulating oil paint blending tools in the industry. Uh, there are other great tools out there, but ArtRage has just kind of got the, it's just like the set it and forget it. You just grab the brush and it works kind of thing. Um, but there are tons of other tools as well. So here I am playing with texture. Uh, this is just using the pen tool um, and the chalk pastel tool. And then there are also these custom brush tools with really nice little presets built in. In this case, I'm using the canvas square canvas two brush um, and it's it's in the custom brush or brush designer presets and it's it's a nice complement to the oil brush because it has um, again really good blending but this time it leaves a textural soft edge between whatever paint colors are crashing together or paint values that are crashing together and my whole goal in playing with all of these different textures is to create um, sort of an underpainting. Um, you know, people will sometimes say, well, how do you paint water? Or how do you paint reflections? Or how do you paint, um, how do you paint a gondola? You know, and, and the answer is, is honestly always the same, is, is that you don't paint those things. All you do is paint the shapes of the light and the dark. And in that way, you sort of hack your brain into sort of thinking about what's, what's really happening here is that, it's just, you're just a magician and this is all illusion and you're just using um, the tricks of light and dark to create the illusion. So um, in preparation for that, I wanted to use all of the palette knife and all of these different sort of presets here, as you can see, to create um, a kind of a messy underpainting that I will then build the final illustration on top of. And um, you really have, you have to just think about when you're painting, is, is something light? Is it dark? Is it warm? Is it cool? Are the edges soft or are they hard? And in, and in a lot of ways, that's kind of the only thing you need to know. Um, and your brain at the, you know, can intellectualize the rest. Like, oh, well, what, what's happening with the atmospheric perspective? How do I create visual consistency? Um, are my, is my perspective accurate? Um, what's, what's going on with, um, with the focal point? How do I draw the eye? You know, there's, there's a lot of considerations that go beyond that, obviously, but um, when you're really just kind of nuts and bolts, just down to the bones, what's painting, you're, you're just asking yourself really simple questions like, am I painting, is, is, it, is it light, is it dark, is it warm, is it cool, is it soft edged or hard edged? And then um, here you can see I'm just amassing almost like, this is like digital painting impressionism where I'm just taking um, a brush with slightly different settings along the way to keep some variety and I'm just putting mark after mark after mark down, um, changing the size of the brush, changing the angle of the attack, so to speak, so I can keep some freshness in the look of the, of the mark making. And um, 
the whole point here is again we're we're working on a sort of a layering process. Uh, you think about painting is almost like sculpture. If you watch watch as I paint this uh, gondolier here, it's going to be a really bizarre way of working. You might think. Um, as I'm just sort of slopping blobs of paint onto other blobs of paint. And it's it's a way of finding the shape. Um, instead of grabbing my pencil and doing an, uh, you know, a rendering or a drawing of, of, of the proportions and the anatomy and you know, the set of the shoulders and the angle of the hips and all of that, um, I'm literally just kind of smashing color on top of color and letting those blobs of value find the shape that I'm looking for. And this is a really fun way to work because what you're doing is um, is very sculptural. You're like, you know, like an additive and subtractive technique with, with balls of clay. Um, and, it, and it lets you sort of, one of the really cool byproducts is it makes amazing edges. Uh, the edges are very organic and they come to life through multiple brush strokes as opposed to sort of a linear edge. Um, the edge here, edges here are, um, are created through um, just the collisions of, of blocks of value. And so as you can see, the gondolier here is has a great gestural pose and all the edges are very dynamic and it doesn't look like he's been copy pasted in. It just looks very um, organically uh, of, uh, kind of erupting out of the rest of the painting. And so that's, that's just a benefit of, of kind of being brush stroke oriented and value oriented as opposed to line uh, oriented. So um, with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and explore a little further. Um, beyond this texture, what we're going to do is, is start focusing again on those values and making sure we have the right amount of contrast, lights and darks, etc. And um, as we kind of clean that up, we're going to get to the fun part, which is where do, this, where do these blend modes fit in? And for the point of this video, I'm not really worried about the rendering or the, or the finishing of this painting. It's more about trying to demonstrate like, hey, um, if you've got a painting um, that, that is you know, finished or not, you, know, you can start exploring with blend modes quite early on to sort of push the ideas that you're, you're trying to communicate. And by the ideas, I mean, um, I mean the lighting. Uh, there's, there's a lot of idea that comes from lighting. Um, you think about uh, time of day, um, quality of light you know if you've ever been to different cities across the world you know that the lighting has a different feel in different cities based on maybe where it is uh, relative to the, the sun and the equator um, season time of day uh, amount of atmosphere and moisture debris uh, you know the cleanliness of the air whatever there's just so many different factors that impact that quality and color and feeling of the light in different places in the world in different times of day and so um, that can have a huge impact on, on the idea of and feeling and the mood and the tone of the piece. And so, um, you know, as much as, as being able to be a, you know, good at rendering and, and be able to draw architecture and anatomy and, and all of that, that, that stuff is awesome and you have to be able to do that. Um, it's also really important to study the way that light works and to, to be able to think, um, almost like a sculptor uh, around around the lighting. And um, sometimes freeing yourself up to focus exclusively on that is um, incredibly fun, <laughs> you know, number one for your, for your practice, but it's also, I think, incredibly important for your growth. And um, as you can see here, that everything I'm doing is, is like um, evolutionary and organic process of, of things going on top of and top of on top of. And, um, again, it's that sculptural process. And I think, you know, the other thing to kind of note is that value is relative. And even though I'm, I'm sampling directly from the photo reference here, um, it's, it's still not like enough. Um, not that you need to be someone that exaggerates the truth or reality, but we know that um, photographic reference has its own inborn limitations because of the nature of of uh, cameras and exposure and the way that, that things work within a camera. So what I wanted to suggest in this video is that, hey, you know, maybe you get to this point in the painting and you say, I would like to try something else. And, and I want to try to push this a little bit. So what I did is made a new layer. You can see over there on the right side, it says layer two. And I'm just painting with warm tones, knowing that um, the time of day I kind of want to push toward is 
uh, you know, sort of an afternoon, uh, late afternoon um, kind of lighting. And so what I've done is set the blend mode. You can click uh, onto the layer, the little piece of paper looking uh, icon on the layer, and then you get the blend mode. And you can send it send it to overlay or soft light in this case. I think I said I did overlay. And there's a bunch of different blend modes, but what I'm doing here is basically pushing or exaggerating the warms and the cools in the lights and the shadows. So obviously here in the shadows, the sh these shadows are cool and I'm pushing the, the, the warm highlights uh, warmer. So I'm using kind of a blue, dark blue, dark blue green, dark blue purple for the shadows, a little bit of moving the, the, the hue around a little bit so I can get some variety there. And then for the lights, I'm really just pushing it all into those warm yellow oranges. And you can see as um, I'm putting this down. Artrage is a great piece of software, not only because you know uh, it can do all this stuff that Photoshop can do or whatever, but 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 that it, it, every time you put it down a stroke, um, the brush has got this great texture to it, and, and that texture is um, is adding even in these blend modes. It's adding just so much. Now here's one of those things where I talked about the limitations of the photo. Uh, very often I feel like photos lose the lightness that should be present in the sky. So even though I color sampled directly from the photo and painted the sky, it just didn't feel like the light was scattering through the sky and you know pouring down from, from the sun up in that sky. And so I, I painted a lighter uh, kind of layer of tone on top of the sky and, and made the sky color pop. And here, the other thing that's cool is, you know, I have the initial painting, which had a decent structure, but now you can see as I cycle through turning these layers on and off, you can see like the amazing impact of just adding a layer and changing a blend mode. So um, it's it's definitely like tantalizing and tempting to kind of exaggerate a bunch with stuff like this. You go, oh my gosh, I can push this so far. I can make it so dynamic. And then, you know, that's great. And, and if you need something um, maybe for a client that's you know, it needs to be really woo ah, a lot of wow factor. Um, yeah, you can push those lights and those darks in that time of day and really make it vibrant. And um, finding those, uh, you know, really hot, uh, concentrated um, temp color temperatures right at the edge of your lights uh, and as they transition to the shadows, etc. Um, but here I added a second blend mode. This one was uh, a little bit softer. It's the um, soft light instead of overlay. And then I just added a, a third one and I'll do soft light again, playing with the glitter texture. And then some, um, my plan always, if I use the glitter texture is, is just to knock it down with the palette knife. And, you know, I like to do random stuff like this, just out of, from my own curiosity, but sometimes just to show uh, students how there's just these weird little tools in our age and how you might use them and, and what they might be beneficial for. So here with the layer set to um, overlay, you can see that the, the palette knife is just, creating like um, almost like a three-dimensional normal, like a text, normal texture, like a faux 3D, and then you can knock it down with a palette knife to kind of make it a little more palatable. But yeah, there you go. Hopefully you enjoy the blend modes.